Thanks to our first segment, the Freedom Flotilla seeking to reach the Gaza Strip is in limbo under the weight of Israeli-U.S. pressure, unrest in Greece, and acts of sabotage targeting its ships. A number of vessels remain moored in Greek ports, stranding hundreds of passengers and the humanitarian cargo they're hoping to bring to Gazans living under an Israeli blockade. The ships were supposed to set sail this week, but the Greek government, already facing a financial crisis and public uproar over austerity measures, has has blocked the ship's departure under international pressure. Meanwhile, an Irish ship moored in Turkey was pulled out of the flotilla after its engine was badly damaged in an act of sabotage. Another ship is undergoing repairs in Greece after unknown vandals damaged its propeller. Flotilla organizers have blamed the Israeli government. Israel has denied involvement, but is openly celebrating the flotilla setbacks. On Thursday, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel is entitled to stop the flotilla as part of its, quote, full right to operate against efforts to smuggle weapons into Gaza. We're going to be speaking with the Israeli Consul General in New York uh, in our next segment. But right now, we turn to Democracy Now! producer Aaron Mate, uh, who is in Greece covering the journey of the flotilla's U.S. flagship called the Audacity of Hope, after President Obama's best-selling book. Uh, Aaron was there Thursday as the ship was publicly unveiled. He filed this report. <laughs> After more than a week of being stranded in Athens amidst Israeli government pressure, U.S. government warnings, and a political crisis in Greece that certainly weakened the Greek government's ability to withstand international pressure, passengers aboard the Audacity of Hope, the U.S. boat to Gaza, gathered at their ship for the first time. If the, if the Israeli government really does not want us to sail and doesn't want us to sail again and again and again and again, then they need to, to end the blockade of Gaza. Flanked by her fellow passengers, retired U.S. Army Colonel Anne Wright held a news conference discussing the challenges that face this ship in trying to reach Gaza. The government of Greece tragically is being complicit with the Israeli government. It's being pounded by the Israeli government not to let these boats sail. It's part of the diplomatic offensive that the Israeli government has been moving on for the last three months to prevent the flotilla from sailing. A flotilla of unarmed civilian ships filled with unarmed civilian people. Greek authorities blocked the ship's departure following a complaint from an Israeli group. Other flotilla ships are in a similar bind, and two have been sabotaged while moored in their ports. Our boats are being surveilled, they are being watched, and in some cases, they have been sabotaged. A Greek, Norwegian, Swedish passenger boat was sabotaged just this last week. An axle to a propeller shaft was, was cut off. And then, just yesterday, in Turkey, the Irish boat, in, attack of, in, a, in an incident of terrorism, this is terrorism. When you go after a boat and disable it. Organizers now say the Irish ship has suffered too much damage and won't be sailing for Gaza. As their numbers dwindle, the Freedom Flotilla faces a tough choice. Wait for permission and they could never leave. But if they defy orders and set sail, they risk arrest and an end to their mission. For U.S. passengers, the U.S. backing of the Israeli effort to stop the flotilla provokes anger. Last week, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton suggested Israel would have the right to use force to stop the ships. Among the U.S. passengers is author Alice Walker. It's so um, pathetic to, to, to put it in those terms because we're carrying letters. We're carrying letters, a lot of them from children. And to think that a big, strong government like Israel, which is the fourth largest military power on Earth, would be afraid of the letters of children is saying a lot, and that our government in the United States uh, cares more about the feelings of the Israeli government than about the feelings of its citizens 
I think it's very serious. My name is Hetty Epstein. I think the reason for some of this is they're afraid that if they do not support and go along with whatever Israel demands, that they might be considered anti-Semitic. And it's ridiculous to be, have that kind of a fear. And even if you were called anti-Semitic, I'm being called anti-Semitic, so you know, it's, it's not pleasant, I agree, but it doesn't stop me from doing what I'm about to do or what I have done or what I will do. I'm Richard Levy. I'm a passenger on the Audacity of Hope. We have gotten no support from the United States on this. Apparently, free speech is not really for Americans if it involves Palestine, and it's not really for the Mideast if it involves Palestine. Free speech is okay in some countries. It is not okay in other countries. And our consulate has basically turned us down flat in terms of support to allow this flotilla to go forward. A great disappointment. My name is Missy Lane, and I'm from Washington, D.C. I think the fact that so many powerful, wealthy governments are working so hard to keep us from going um, shows how significant it is. Just so, so much of the propaganda in the media that, or mainstream media that you see says that there's total support for Israel and they're the only democracy in the Middle East. And um, I think that anything to negate that, to show the truth that clearly a million and a half people living in Gaza don't hate freedom, they're desperate for freedom. The flotilla seeks to leave Greece as the country is in uproar over a radical austerity program demanded by international lenders. The connection is not lost on flotilla passenger Henry Noor. This country is faced with a structural adjustment program dictated by the banks that's the most profound and disruptive and uh, any, that's ever happened to a first world country. It's the kind of thing that's happened many times before to third world countries and it happened in Eastern Europe. It never happened before to a European country. Their living standards are being slashed. One of the things that's got to me is hearing that on the IMF list of demands is that they privatize the port of Piraeus. That's the port adjacent to Athens. For 3,000 years at least, that port has been the outlet, Greece's outlet to the world. We happen to be here at a moment of profound crisis for this country. You know, the Greeks are every bit as much a victim uh, as we are, even though they are the ones who are keeping us here. Held back by the confluence of geopolitical imbalance and local unrest, the flotilla's journey to Gaza is in doubt. But regardless of whether or not their ships leave port, Passengers say they're already one step closer to their ultimate goal of freeing Gaza. This feels like a setback, but I have lived long enough now to see that sometimes setbacks have a, you know, a better outcome than you would ever imagine. And so I take the position that getting this far um, with getting this boat is a beautiful boat, and we have good food, and we have lots of water, and we have music, and we have each other, that this is a major victory uh, in, the, in the movement forward on this issue, but also the movement around the world of people just getting together as citizens, making a decision to change a bad situation, and sticking together. With what happened in the United States in the 1960s, the civil rights movement, you know, there were waves and waves of people. They knew they were going to get hurt, maybe. They knew they were going to have dogs set upon them. They knew they were going to be hosed down with, by a water, uh, with strong water hoses. And they kept on coming until one day, they won. And this is exactly what we're going to be doing. There'll be waves and waves of flotillas until we reach our goal and break the siege of Gaza. For Democracy Now!, I'm Aaron Maté with Hani Massoud in Athens. And thanks to uh, Aaron and Hani for that report. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. We'll be back in a minute.
The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We're broadcasting from London. Gonzalez in New York. As we've reported, up to 400 international activists are waiting to set sail for Gaza aboard 10 ships leaving from Greece. However, the Israeli government is trying to prevent the ships from leaving port and has vowed to intercept them should they set sail. Uh, yesterday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu thanked allies of the Jewish state, including Greece, for helping delay the flotilla's departure. I want to thank the many leaders in the world for speaking and acting recently against the provocative flotilla especially the leaders of the United States and Europe, the U.N. Secretary General, and my friend, the Prime Minister of Greece, George Papandreou. Israel has the total right to act against attempts to legitimize the smuggling of missiles and rockets and other weapons to the Hamas terror enclave. That was Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Yesterday, the Israeli military claimed it had uncovered financial links between the Gaza-bound flotilla and the Palestinian movement Hamas. However, flotilla participants have unequivocally denied such claims, noting Israel has provided no evidence. The activists have repeatedly stated their commitment to nonviolence, and they have welcomed the media to inspect their boats, interview all passengers, and even taste the food on board. This is Anne Wright, a retired Army colonel and former diplomat who is participating in the flotilla. On behalf of the U.S. Boat to Gaza, the audacity of hope to welcome you, the members of the international press and the Greek press, uh, to our unveiling of our ship, the audacity of hope, which is named for a book that our president of the United States has written. We use it because we are challenging U.S. government policies, policies that support the state of Israel in its naval blockade of Gaza. That was Anne Wright, a retired Army colonel and former